Measuring is another skill which involves ascertaining a property of a material and expressing it in a defined unit. As mentioned earlier, measurements are expressed in standard units. In 1960, the International System of Units, abbreviated as SI, has been adopted and is continuously being used with the purpose of providing a coherent and standardized unit system. In our daily lives, we use SI unit to describe common physical quantities. Length in meters, mass in kilograms, time in seconds, electric current in amperes, temperature in kelvin, and volume in cubic meters. For extremely large and extremely small numerical values, decimal multipliers are very helpful in describing such quantities. Decimal multipliers are simply fractions or multiples of the base unit. The mass of an object can be expressed in grams, kilograms, or milligrams, where a kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams, well, one milligram is equivalent to one over 1,000 gram. For example, the mass of a sack of rice is usually expressed in kilograms, while the mass of a microchip in a computer is more suitable to be expressed in milligrams. Consider the number of atoms in one mole of an element, or the radius of a hydrogen atom. For extremely large and extremely small quantities, there is a more convenient way to express such values. This is called the scientific notation. A scientific notation is expressed in this format, n times 10 raised to a, where n is the numerical coefficient between 1 and 10, and a is the power of 10, which indicates the number of times the coefficient is to be multiplied or divided by 10. Here is an example. In doing measurements in science, we often need to convert one unit of measurement to another unit. We can do this by using a method called factor label method, commonly known as dimensional analysis. This approach allows us to convert an initial unit of measurement to our desired unit of measurement using a valid conversion factor. A conversion factor is equal to 1. Therefore, multiplying or dividing a given quantity with a conversion factor will simply transform the initial value to a new value expressed in a different unit of measurement. Here is an example. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed learning with us. For more videos like this, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification button. I'll see you in the next lesson.